Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Shake Master J speaking. And I would like to welcome you to another unpopular review. However, we're going to do two reviews in one. And this theme is Black Panther. So, obviously over the weekend last week, the Black Panther soundtrack was released. And I gave it a listen, and I actually enjoyed it. And then I just went and saw the movie. Now, I'm just going to let you guys know ahead of, uh, ahead of time, right now... If you are not looking to be spoiled, this is not the review for you. There are spoiler free videos on YouTube. This will strictly be a spoiler review. I don't really have time to really do reviews um, back and forth, nor the money. So here we go. Let's get started on the album review first well obviously um the black panther album was pretty much handled by top dog entertainment particularly kendrick lamar mainly because he's their biggest star in the label slash group collective um so they figured they'd have him do the album instead which is fine. Obviously, Kendrick was on a majority of tracks. Um, and I've actually enjoyed both. I've actually enjoyed the whole track. I've enjoyed it all from front to back. I mean, um, this album, some people will say it's cohesive. I tend to disagree. I believe it is cohesive for a soundtrack. And what it is, is it's just a score it's a score for the movie um characters are reference themes of survival being kings villain type behavior the love for the people it's all over this album a king type a king type feeling being a star it's it's literally in this album and you will get that with this album, and it ties with the se with the theme. Unfortunately, not all the songs were played on this album. Um, three were three were played in the movie from the album. Um, however, I would like to go up and say this: two features stole the show. One is Two Chains. Two Chains has come a long way from Based on a True Story, and Based on a True Story, I enjoyed. But his character obviously wasn't that serious until like Pretty Girls Like Trap, and now Two Chains is just a little bit up higher on the lyrical echelon, which is great. Um, I feel like he stood out with this track so much more, especially when the beat changed on X. Schoolboy did his thing, Kendrick was alright, but Two Chains was the fucking star of this. And don't at me if you don't think so. Um, productions from the, the, the some of the Wakandan sounds that I've heard on here that actually play in the movie were great. Some of the African instruments, the fact that Kendrick actually put African artists on here were great. It's wonderful. Um, obviously, there's nothing I could really take away from this album except the fact that Kendrick doesn't need to be on every damn song. Um, but. I understand that he's handling the project. Um, my least favorite would be Pray For Me. Um, all the stars. The interlude with Zachary and the redemption song itself. Um, and that's just quite a few. Um, let me roll down this. X is obviously my favorite. Big Shot with Travis Scott. Um, King's Dead was definitely my favorite. Yes, I, de I enjoyed Future's verse on there too. Um, it actually grew on me. Um, like some of you people that 
may have their little thing against it. That's fine, but I enjoyed it for what it was. Um, the video, though, the King's Dead video was weird. I enjoyed the video up until, like, that one part when they did the beat switch in the video where Kendrick, I guess, was buying something from somebody, and then the guy was struggling. Just seeing Kendrick struggle to pull his gun on the guy, just it just seemed pretty awkward. Like, almost to the fact I felt bad for him. <laughs> like, he looked like such a little boy, he like a kid struggling. That is what Kendrick, he looks like a kid struggling to pull out his gun. Obviously, he pulls out his gun and shoots the guy, but I'm going to tell you this right now. If this is the type of character that Kendrick is on the video, I want to hear Kendrick talk about pulling guns and being gangster. Because that was as far as tough as I did not buy. I do not buy Kendrick as a tough guy. I don't care how sexy he going to make if he's got to go hard on somebody or slap a pussy ass nigga. Hell, even when he slapped a mock Big Sean on the Element video, I didn't buy him as gangster. Look at me. Look at how sexy my shirt is. I killed somebody. I'm sexy. And not according to this video. Tell me something different. But that's neither here nor there. Um, I also loved... What else? Um, the track with The Ways with Sway Lee and Khalid was great. It was, it was amazing. The, the African... The... the the sunset-like feel to it was just perfect. And the hook... Yeah, that, that was fucking... Oh, my God. I would listen to that any day, any week, any time. And y'all know this. Um, with that being said... Um, I have no complaints about this album. Production was great. The sound was consistent all the way. Kendrick did a good job handling the project. Um, much to the credit of Abso, who was also the star of this album, with his solo track on there, um, where at, where Anderson Pac was on the on the hook. It just Abso was just getting it in on the on the lyrics. Although, he did take a few lyrics from some people, but, eh, y'all didn't notice that. But Abso was killing that track, like, so, it was beautiful, it was, he just, he was flawless on that. Best top dog lyricist in that group. Indeed. And, really, much love to SZA, okay track. Weekend, obviously, did his thing. Not a, really a fan of Pray For Me, but I didn't hate it. Um, like I said, Khalid, um, Zakari, um, Sway Lee, Schoolboy, J-Rock, even Future. Now, um, there are some African artists on here that I will not really name. Um, but I will credit them on the description, um, if I can take the time to do that. The uh, African artists, I will not say their name because I do not want to mess up their name, but they've done a great job. Um, there are some other features there too. They, 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 they were great. The sound was great. The consistent was great. Kendrick did a good job with this. Um, and that leads me to give it the rating of an 8 out of 10. Solid project. Now it's time we get to the actual film itself. Like I said, before I transition, I want people to know, this is not a spoiler-free review. There's going to be spoilers in this. Just letting you guys know ahead of time. If you want to stop the video, you can. If not, here we go. Okay. For the movie itself, this was an amazing movie. This movie, where do I begin? Um, first and foremost, Chadwick Boseman's character was great. T'Challa was great, great for what it was. He did his thing. 
I can't. I think it was Lilia, Lateria Wright, the sister. Now I heard she stole the show. I wouldn't say she stole the show, but she was great. She was really good in this. Um, Lupita Nyong'o was all right. wasn't really feeling her like that. But I mean, what can I tell you, man? The theme of this was definitely tribal. I want to say there's it literally has isolation, division, and union all in one war, protection, um, just the fact that, you know, I mean, it was just such a good movie that it had so many themes, so many messages on there. Certain things that people said on there, especially the white guy, he was like, man, you're lucky we're letting you do this. I'm just like, oh, okay. Um, I mean, what can I tell you? Killmonger's character, Michael B. Jordan did a great job with Killmonger's character. I'm pretty sure a lot of black people can relate to Killmonger. Easy. Simple. No argument. With Killmonger's character talking about frustration of his uncle dying in the hands of T'Challa's father, you know, just that, you have Killmonger being frustrated, wanting to actually go to war with the enemy, or the oppressor, as they like to say, um, a lot of people felt that way, some people felt like they didn't want to do that, but then there's other people that felt low-key, like, you know what, maybe we should go to war, because we want, and then there's some, you know, there's Chadman's ex-girlfriend, turned current girlfriend, queen, I guess, that just felt that she wanted to do more, not necessarily get violent, but help other people out there, while Killmonger felt like they just want to just take everything back. Because the people were just so oppressed and so buried and put underground that it's just time to rise up above it all and learn and make sure. Just take it back. I mean, really, when you look at the scope of things, I was definitely, uh, I definitely know a lot of people can relate to Killmonger, especially the minorities. They know that they're all about retaliation. And I felt like that's what Killmonger's character was, retaliation. But it's to the point where he's become so focused on it that, yeah, he's become the enemy. He's become who he hates. And that's always a fight within the self. When you always think about retaliation and wanting to get back at someone, it's, I mean, it's a shame I don't take my own advice as I say this, but yeah, you know, when you retaliate, you're stooping to that level, then you become that person, because what happens when you overcome that? What happens when you overthrow that person? What happens when you get over that, get, get one over on that person? You're going to start feeling yourself, and then ultimately, you're going to be like that. And I feel like, in my opinion, you are better than that, that you shouldn't stoop to their level. You should do positive. And I'm guessing that's what T'Challa's character was. That's what the girlfriend was for. And I will, um, if y'all seen my quote, I put it on Twitter and I put it on my Instagram literally said the best quote in the Killmonger said the best quote in the movie where T'Challa is like look I can heal you and Killmonger's like why so you can send me to jail no if I die and he said and I quote if I die bury me in the ocean with my ancestors because they know what it's like to choose death over bondage that was like the 
realest, painful, truthfulest thing I've heard any villain say. He'd rather die than be enslaved again. Or imprisoned is the more appropriate term. And to shame. Now initially I was going to give this a 4 out of 5 stars. Until the end where uh, T'Challa and his sister went to Oakland and decided to buy out one of the project buildings just so he can set up some help set up some Wakanda like help for the community and I felt like this is perfect now on to that point where people have protested and said proceeds from the black profits from the Black Panther movie ticket sales blah 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 should go to African American population. Do I necessarily think it should happen? I don't know. I don't want to say I don't care, but I'm indifferent to it. If it happens, I would love to see it happen. It would be great. And no, saying that filming helped Atlanta Atlanta economy is not enough. You're not going to distract me by saying that. I think if you really are genuine actually put money to the people who feel like they're oppressed you know what I mean I'm not asking for a check I'm not asking oh well, maybe I am but you know all blacks are asking for it is since you're making this a pro-black movie you're making this a movie about black excellence excellence are we going to profit off this? That's all they're asking. And I say, why not do that? Do just that. You, Stan Lee or people at Marvel Disney, y'all would be doing wonders by helping the Africans out. That's all. Um, if you don't, I mean, I'm not expecting this to happen. That's why I always say don't rely on somebody getting out the hood to just help you. Always help yourself as well. Always. Um, now for the humor and the content. First thing I, I also want to say is, I saw this movie at Wellington. I saw this movie with a whole bunch of whites and non-blacks. And I can tell you this. But some of the themes, some of the emotion, some of everything that's done in this movie, black people, it would you would enjoy this more with a group of black people. No argument. Cause there are certain jokes and references that white people didn't necessarily get. Like they really did not get some of these jokes. I'm dead serious. So it was kind of a letdown that I didn't really get to join the fuckery but I'll say this though you with black people you're going to enjoy this you a whole bunch of black people you are going to enjoy the fuck out of this I'm telling you um and with that being said it was funny cause it was like the movie was over a bunch of I think a white kid walked up and saw um, T'Challa talk, he was like, Mocha Latte Chocolata. <laughs> he calls him T'Challa, he's like, Mocha Latte Chocolata. That's so fucked up, but I, I could not stop laughing. Oh my god, that was funny. Oh, that was so funny. But, overall, because of the ending scene, instead of giving it a 4 out of 5, I definitely give it a 4.5 out of 5. No, I don't think... It's a hundred percent. I don't take Rotten Apple seriously since they gave Suicide a bad rating and they gave Justice League a bad rating. Both good movies that I've actually enjoyed. So I don't take Rotten Tomatoes seriously when they gave Black Panther a 100% rating. But it is, it does live up to its hype. Absolutely. We've been waiting three years for this shit or at least two and it does live up to this hype 
and I recommend a lot of people watch this and I hope y'all enjoy with that being said this is Shake Master J follow me on IG follow me on Facebook follow me on Snapchat and let me know what I should review whether it's movies, movies and let me know what I should talk about Shake Master J signing off with a crotch grab. Peace.